Hey you, I'm Dallas Ann, creator of the Violet Pie, and you're listening to Knitting Myself Together. This is our bi-weekly seasonal time that you and I get to have. We get to sit down and talk, chat while knitting or doing life, and we're talking about what goes on in your life, my life, and how knitting integrates with all of that. It's a whole thing. And I'm really excited to be exploring this with you. So I'm recording this on November 1st, which while it is the first day of November, it also has the notorious placement of being the day after Halloween. Now, if you don't have young children, if you don't work in education or childcare, you might not get the implications of the day after Halloween. I genuinely believe it should be a national holiday and everybody should just have it off to sleep off their sugar comas. Um, (laughs) I am utterly exhausted, not because I had a sugar coma, but because I've been dealing with what feels like a million and three children who have been, not just my own, but the ones I work with on a daily basis. It's uh it's been a rough, rough day. I I think I'm gonna throw in show notes what I wore to work. <laughs> it um it's like a beautiful hybrid of a toddler and a bag lady and it's full of hand knits. So yeah, I'm gonna be throwing that picture up on uh, (laughs) on the show notes page you can find it at thevioletpie.com slash podcasts just search for episode 204 and there you will see me in all my glory um i was comfortable and that that is truly what mattered but to to kind of bring it back to what we're actually talking about um we're talking about giving gifts knitting for other people. That's the theme for this season. Another theme that I'm wanting to start is a mini theme, a mini series, I guess, so to speak, called Nitty Gritty, where I take one small topic in the knitting world that I really can't expand out into an entire season's theme and just focus on that and how it might integrate with our overall season. So for this episode of the Nitty Gritty mini-series, I'm going to be talking about stash management because stash management is one of the best ways to also deal with knitting for other people. But but before we get there, I have a little bit of business that I want to share with you. Exciting stuff. I swear it's not going to be about taxes and budgets and stupid stuff like that. It's it's good stuff. So just hang in there with me. But if you want to get down to the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of the episode, um, I don't know, hit fast forward, go get a drink, something, come back, but, but come back, okay? Just, just come back. So coming up on November 18th, which is a Saturday, my patrons who subscribe or support the podcast at um, a slightly higher level have opened up the Google Hangout virtual knitting group that we have. And we all want to invite everyone to come to that. So you, I really want you to come on November 18th hang out for like 30 minutes with me and other patrons and just see what it's all about. I really want to see your face. I want to see your voice. I want to see your current work and project progress. I want to see a finished project you're proud of, whatever. I mean, last time we had a patron who her work in progress while she was chatting with us was packing up her house to move. I swear. We're super laid back and easy. The sign up link for this is going to be in the show notes. We have a limited number of seats in the knitting group. It's it's just the way it goes. It's 10 people. 
We'll cap it at 10 and just see where we go from there. But please, would you come out and join us November 18th? The link is in show notes. Also, because you listen to the podcast and you come hang out with me here, you get a little bit of sneak peek knowledge, a little view into the future. Uh, the 7th of November, I'm releasing a new pattern. It's for this super great cowl called Weather Vane, and I I'm just over the moon about it. The testing experience I had with my test knitters was utterly flawless. I have not yet had a flawless without stress testing experience until it came to Weathervane. And all of their finished objects, uh, they were just to die for. I mean, it didn't matter whether somebody used a heavily variegated yarn or a tonal or a solid. It was beautiful. I can't wait to show it to you. Oh my gosh. Uh, November 7th is when the pattern releases on Ravelry, but I'll be releasing sneak peeks leading up to November 7th on social media. So follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm also on Tumblr and Twitter. But, but follow me on some form of social media so you can get that sneak peek that's coming. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, also, the giveaway closed and we got our winners. Allie and Bethany both won. I am so excited for them. Um, their yarn and their gift card should be going out in the mail this week. And oh, I really, really hope y'all both tag me in projects that you knit with the yarn you're getting. I cannot wait to see it. So hooray for you both, Allie and Bethany. Uh, between the last podcast and this podcast, I released a pattern, the Etta sweater or Etta cardigan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot even begin to express how grateful I am for you for supporting me I sold enough patterns that I owed Ravelry seller fees, which is kind of a bittersweet moment. On one hand, it's like, oh my gosh, I sold enough to hit that milestone. And on the other hand, it's, oh my gosh, I sold enough that I hit that milestone. Ugh, taxes. But it is super amazing. And really, if you haven't checked out the pattern, link will be in show notes and you've just just go take a look i am so immensely proud of it but enough business you know come back come on back <laughs> i'm done chatting about the stuff that has nothing to do with the the topic of our conversation um because today we're talking about stash management you know that beast that's growing in the cupboard <laughs> or taking over our basement or the garage or the storage under the bed. Oh, I have one friend who she has a bed that ma the mattress lifts up off the box springs. She promised her husband that her stash would never extend past the, the, the box spring storage. So I think it's a queen size bed. Maybe it's a king size these days, but she's kept to her word. Her stash has not ex expen expanded past that. Um, I have no such restrictions in my life, but my stash is fairly manageable. I can fit it in a, um, like a curio cupboard sort of thing. Well, that's not the right term. Gosh, I'm so tired. Halloween, man, it's terrible. Um, this uh, cupboard of sorts. I've got, I can fit all of my yarn in it. I don't keep all of my yarn in it, but I can get it all in there. But not everybody can. And let me tell you, I love you for it. Uh, if, if you happen to think of it, would you snap a picture of how you store your yarn, what you store it in, where you keep it, whether it's pretty or just all thrown in there, just snap a picture, post it on Instagram or Facebook, tag me in it. I'd love to see what you do with this. Uh, but, but when you go shopping for yarn, do you 
shop for specific projects? Like, do you have your pattern already picked out and do you dive into your local yarn store or shop online with that specific yardage and type of garment or accessory in mind? Or do you just buy yarn because it calls out to you? And I gotta ask, coming from kind of a type A knitter who would totally panic over not having enough yarn if I bought just what called to me, do, do you buy like a sweater's quantities worth of yarn that calls to you so you will always have enough? Or do you just, you know, gamble with it and buy a single skein? I gotta know, what do you do? Um, as I'm sure you've picked up, I tend to buy uh, with specific patterns in mind or specific designs in mind. I, I have a general grasp on how much yardage it would take for me to knit something based on the construction I'm seeing in my head. So if I'm at a fiber festival or a yarn store or I see an online sale, I can go, okay, they've got enough in the right dye lot. If I buy this much, I can work a raglan and um, a circular yoke sweater, but there's no way I could get, do a sweater with set and sleeve. So if I want to do that, I need to pick up two extra skeins, you know, something along those lines. Um, but, but that's how I buy my yarn. I, I do it generally with specific projects in mind. I haven't actually had to buy yarn for a really long time uh, because I've had nothing but amazing fortune and generosity in my life when it comes to um, my designs and pitching it to indie dyers and getting yarn support. So I've been very privileged in the fact that I've been able to just um, buy a skein of souvenir yarn for uh, for for a trip or an event or a moment in my life that really speaks to me. Uh, but that all set, said and done, my stash is quite extensive, at least for me, and it's a little overwhelming at times because sometimes I feel guilty that my yarn is aging in my cupboard. I mean, yeah, yarn, like wine, it's probably not going to go bad for a long time, but still, it should be used, not kept in a cupboard. So, something I've discovered that is a great way to stash bust and use up the tail end of um, projects. I, I hate playing chicken with my yarn. <laughs> so I tend to buy one or two skeins extra, which leaves me with one or two skeins unopened at the end. Eh. So, I use those skeins to knit gifts for other people. Um, my kids' holiday hats, which I've talked about at least two times in previous episodes, are all done in um, in in those extra skeins. Um, there should be a lunch break knitting video coming up on YouTube that will feature some of these holiday hats. And I'm really pleased with how they're turning out, and it's kind of a no cost to me, at least in the moment, holiday gift. And it's, uh, it's a really fun way the kids can shop my stash and pull out the colors that they want and then I get to create something for them. It's, it's pretty great. Um, something else I've really enjoyed with my stash busting efforts is using up those tail ends that are left over from knitting shawls and socks. You know, like those 30 gram tiny little balls of yarn. I mean, what do you do with them? Well, I ended up designing a pattern called Odetta. They're fingerless mitts that have been inspired by the Etta cardigan. I kind of view Odetta as that sassy, pesky younger cousin. <laughs> and it takes such little yardage to make the most adorable accessories. Um, if, if you want to test knit that, I actually have a testing call live right now going for the Odetta mitts over on the Ravelry forms for the Violet Pie. Seriously, go check it out. If you've knit at least one shawl and one pair of socks, I promise you, you have enough yarn left over. And even if you don't, I've got options for you. So, so... Go check it out and 
bust some of your stash out and get some great things in return. Um, but I do have some people in my life who have hit a critical point in their stash. You know, that dreaded term, terminal stash, where you have enough yarn, you have enough fiber, that is going to last you until you die. What do you do then? Do you just keep on buying? What do you do with your yarn and your fiber? I mean, so terminal stash looks different for every person involved. You know, it depends on how old you are, depends on how fast you knit or how fast you spin. Um, also, what your purchase rate is. Like, tell me, if, do, do you have terminal stash? What does that look like? Oh my gosh, would you please take a picture and share it with me? And, and does it, do you care? I mean, I'm kind of talking about stash management here, like it's something to be ashamed of. Uh, it's not. If having lots and lots of beautiful yarn makes you happy, I will not criticize you. I will ask for pictures because I want to admire it, but you go, you do that thing. <laughs> um, the the thing that, that truly plagues me though is my terminal finished object project. Um, not project, my terminal project pile. I have more cowls and more shawls than I actually know what to do with. I have a few that I wear all the time and then some that I wear every now and again. And I feel kind of weird having these piles of things that I hardly wear. And so what I've started to do, what, I, what I've taken to thinking of is when I see a friend who's having a really rough go of it. I look through my shawl collection, I look through my cowls and my hats, and I think, okay, do one of these items fit the lifestyle, the colors, what have you, of my friend who's having a hard time? And if that's the case, then I block it, and I write a quick note, and I send it to them to be a long distance hug. because. As much as I love the internet, one of the great and mighty downfalls of the internet is that most of my friends are flung far and wide across the globe and I can't actually just drive over to their house and give them a hug and bring them soup when they're having a hard time of it. So I do the best I can. I package up a portable hug and I mail it to them with a gigantic kiss on the card. I actually did that with one of my patrons. I didn't ask her if I could actually give a shout out to her name, um, but I did send her um, my beloved Doctor Who shawl. It's uh, the colorways were inspired, at least inspired to me, of the Doctor Who episode with Matt Smith um, with Vincent Van Gogh. That episode. I watch it when I need to cry because it will make me cry, no questions asked. And um, it, it's just beautiful. I'll, I'll link it in show notes so you can see it. And um, it's, it's pretty great and I know for a fact that it's worn and loved regularly by my friend. And that makes it all the better. Uh, speaking of patron and joining the Patreon community. Um, we have a really great Facebook group. It's quiet. It's a little on the low key side, but everyone is just so friendly and so great. And it has really helped develop the community of my people. <laughs> uh, I'm not a cult leader. I promise. <laughs> it's, it's, I just realized that's what it sounded like. Um, just like, the, the people in my life that resonate with me and who I'm developing friendships with. It is so great to have all of these people collected in one place. Consider checking it out. Um, any level of support through Patreon gets you access to the Facebook group and I would really, really love to see you there. So, that's over at patreon.com slash the violet pie. 
and I'll also link that in show notes. Also, again, we're having that Google Hangout where you and I, I can see your face, I can see the stuff you're knitting, I can hear your voice. It's all open to the public for the month of November, and I would really, really love to see you there. So sign up. It's only 30 minutes, and if you feel too socially awkward, it's okay. You can just bow out. No one will think less of you. Um, I really, really hope to see you there. So, this episode was a little short and sweet. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I am just so incredibly tired from Halloween. But I couldn't miss this. I debated for a couple minutes. Am I going to put this off? Should I push this out for another week? And then, no. No. Because talking with you and sharing this space with you actually replenishes my emotional spoons. If that makes any sense to you. If you you understand the spoon theory, hopefully you get where I'm coming from. I always feel better. And feel happier after doing this. So, until next time. You keep that yarn moving.